engineering company DCD has urged the South African government to formally announce a local content threshold for its proposed new nuclear power generation plants. DCD MD Rob King joins me to discuss this call. Rob, before South Africa can even set a local content threshold for a nuclear program, there needs to be some kind of certainty that there will be a nuclear program. Is there this kind of certainty? Yes, there is, uh, Samantha. I think what, what we've had to date is that government has been very consistent in its message that nuclear is going to form part of its power mix, roughly 20-25% of the power mix in terms of the integrated resources plan has been shown to be, in, in terms of the plan, to be nuclear. Um, so I, I, and I haven't heard a single Department of Energy official say otherwise, and they're quite consistent in that message. I think the, qu the big questions are about the when and the how, uh, which is particularly what we're interested in, is the how. Given that there are so many nuclear skeptics, why are you in favour of a nuclear programme? And you did mention South Africa's el electricity mix or South Africa's energy mix. How does it fit in with other potential like gas? Well, I think for, uh, for DCD, we sort of uh, power agnostic, if you wish, for, from a generation or a firing point of view. I mean, it doesn't matter to us if it's coal-fired gas or nuclear. And in fact, if you had to ask us our preference, we're quite delighted that government has started speaking about coal-3 because we've ideally positioned very little change to our business to actually start participating in that. Nuclear is a bit more of a challenge, uh, but gas is the game breaker. I mean, that's the game changer. That could be something different. Uh, to the entire industry and is not in the mix currently and I don't think we know enough about it in terms of the resource. So we're really not in favour of either or, it doesn't matter to us, we're also heavily invested in renewable energy. But I think if, we, if government is going to persist, and I can see the logic about nuclear because it's a large expenditure up front but the running costs are low into the future. So I can see how in a power mix nuclear makes a lot of sense. Now if that's the case, uh, we as industry need to prepare ourselves for being able to participate in nuclear, which uh, we haven't really done as much as we could have in the country. Um, as a company, we've been involved in every single nuclear program that South Africa's had to date. So we've got some experience. It's not like we're talking into a vacuum. But we haven't done a nuclear power plant for quite a few decades. So should the program go ahead, why do you think it's important for government to set that local consent threshold? Samantha, I think if we look back at the renewable energy and our experience in that regard, um, when government announced the renewable energy, and it was particularly wind where we were playing, um, they set a local content threshold of 15%, which was far too low. We made quite a lot of noise about it in the sense of saying we won't create a single new manufacturing job at 15% because it really goes into the sort of infrastructure around it. That number needs to be closer to 40% before we even start seeing the uh, original equipment manufacturers talking to us. And in fact, that was the case. Um, we were asked for prices for a tower, for a blade, um, but no one really engaged with us in sort of looking for firm quotations. But once government indicated, and it took quite a lot of convincing from our side to show government that in fact 40% is quite possible quite early on, um, only once we got that message out did we find the original equipment manufacturers talking to us about it. And in fact, round three that closed on the 19th of August had a 40% 40, 40 local content threshold. And it's quite interesting to note that there's a factory going up in Kukho at the moment that we're building um, that has orders from round two already and actually has a full order book right up into 2016. We haven't even completed the factory. So it shows what effect a local content threshold can have in terms of the negotiations that exist uh, for the local manufacturers. But without that, most of the original equipment manufacturers will be looking at their capacity back home that they're familiar with, that they believe is cheaper, and they'll rather use that. Um, and when it comes to nuclear, that procurement process is a lot more complex because we need to have different skills to what we currently have. And it's not a case like we have in Kuka where it's more boiler makers, more welders, more of those sorts of guys that I need to put together which already exist. We now need skills that are at a higher level to that. So we think government can do us all a favor by getting that announcement out there and saying this is what we are going to need so that industry can get behind this and start creating those skills and if need be, new factories. Um, the procurement process is going to take two to three years. I, I suspect once they start, and the start is what everybody's chomping at the bit about. Um, but 
I actually think those discussions can start before we actually get a request uh, you know, for uh, an RFQ coming out. We should right now be thinking about creating that capacity. Uh, so Rob, local manufacturers who wish to manufacture those uh, nuclear critical uh, components must be certified in accordance with the American Society of Mechanical Engineers 3 code. Can you elaborate on this? Well, the ASME 3, as it's co popularly called, is really a benchmark. And in, it depends on who the vendor is that wins it. But if you can comply with ASME 3, you're virtually going to be able to comply with the French, the Korean, uh, the American, as the ASME 3 would suggest. So it's, it's a philosophy. It's a quality control mechanism. Uh, that you need to uh, abide by. And there is only one company that currently has that accreditation, which is Nexa. Um, but you must also realize that at that level, when you start operating under an ASME 3 philosophy, you do add costs to your business. So there's no advantage to any South African company to have ASME 3 currently. Um, but the fact that we will need it to be able to do work on the nuclear island uh, when the time comes, uh, that's quite important. Off the nuclear island, you can do ASME 8, and there's many companies, including our own, that can achieve any manufacturing to, towards an ASME 8 uh, uh, you know, accreditation. What are some of the challenges for these companies um, when they do seek to obtain the accreditation, and when would it be a right time to pursue the accreditation? Well, in, in our case, if I look at my, uh, my risk threshold, my own investor's risk threshold, we would really only start looking at doing that once we're very sure that we're going to have an order. Um, you actually have to dedicate an area in your factory or perhaps a new factory that does it to ASME 3. And that's a 15 to 20 million investment just to get the accreditation. The factory itself is perhaps another two, three hundred million investment. So this is not something that you can go and do without knowing that for you are going to get uh, you can reasonably expect a, a sizable portion uh, to make a, an investment like that viable. Rob, localization is a major theme across the infrastructure programs in South Africa. How is DCD gearing up to align itself with these opportunities? Samantha, we export 70% of what we do. So we are quite familiar of what it means to actually compete internationally. So this is not a new arena for us. What we are finding, though, is that there is a perception that we don't have the capacity locally. And in fact, I'll go back to the wind tower example. When we spoke to National Treasury about this low local content threshold, they really posed us with three questions. One was, uh, can you be competitive? The second one is, do you have the skills? And the third one is, where is this factory that's going to actually deliver that? Uh, which I think shows us three, uh, three elements of, you know, of different problems. The skills, funny enough, were quite quick to do because we actually built a tower and showed them it can be done. The competitive side was more challenging because there are structural problems within our industry and it's because we've been so isolated, I think, in terms of trying to produce locally and with a strong RAND, and now we've got the weak RAND, so we've got the opposite side of that, and which we might, as manufacturers, be quite delighted about, but it also puts you into a false sense of security about your real competitive environment. Now, we've been competitive when the RAND was 7 RAND to the dollar. Now, that drives a, a different philosophy in it. And when we priced our towers, we were coming out at a price of right around about 6.5 million rand per tower where you could import it at 4.5 million rand. So adding that sort of cost to, to the, wind, the cost of wind power didn't make sense. But when you looked at that cost and broke it down, you found that the real problem was that 70% of it was the price of local steel. And uh, we had a lot of engagement with the Department of Trade and Industry about this, who indicated to us that, uh, well, first, uh, let's go and check it, which makes sense from their perspective. And they came back and they indeed indicated that uh, there is a problem. And in the tender process, they then issued a briefing note that imported steel of a certain type will be deemed local. And from that moment onwards, we were capable of producing towers at 4.5 million uh, per tower. Now, that's a substantial change. Now, to gear ourselves up for that is uh, you have to go through that exercise. So we need to start talking to these vendors that would like to win these, uh, you know, obviously win the big bid for, to build a nuclear power plant. Start engaging with them and find out where are we uncompetitive and let's start dealing with those issues. I'm not too convinced that skills is going to be our problem. I've been quite satisfied that we, we have been capable of producing those skills given enough time and the right investment and mindset, uh, having 
factories that are competitive on an international scale, we, we will find that quite challenging. I think we've got, uh, across the board, um, quite outdated equipment in some places. Uh, we've just recently constructed a new factory to produce forged rings, which at the moment is a world-class factory. It, it will compete with any in terms of technology in the world. But it was quite interesting to see how different that factory is from the old factory that we used to operate in Springs. So there is quite a lot of that that needs to happen. We, got, we have to look at our technologies and look at how we need to do things differently. The Towers has shown us that we actually have to start automating a lot more, which maybe is not what the unions would like to hear. But I would counter that with a th thought that says that those people that operate those automated environments have far more meaningful jobs. They're no longer at the lower end of the skill set. They're at the higher end of the skill set and they're entitled to earn more. So it does change that dynamic quite a lot. As for the third question from government of show us the factories, well, the factory's going up, but there are many factories that exist currently that just need to be looked at differently to see what we can upskill, to be modernized, and I think we can indeed uh, compete internationally with the in terms of supply of not just nuclear components. We must remember there's stuff that sits outside of the nuclear island, and I think it's about a 60-40 split depending which technology you choose. Uh, so 60% of it, there's no need for ASME 3, and in fact, most of our factories are quite capable of doing it, not just ours. I mean, we have competitors in this market as well. Well, Rob, Engineering News will definitely be following up with DCD um, to find out more in the future on how the story develops. Thank you very much, Samantha. That was DCD MD Rob King discussing the need for confirmation of a local content threshold for South Africa's nuclear program.